Hello? Can you see, yes, see can my see screen? Yeah. Okay, so next week I'm going to give this 15 minute presentation in the FRB 2020 online conference. It was uh, uh, scheduled in Thailand, but now due canceled and moved it online due to the COVID-19. Uh, okay, so my talk is about using FRB as a probe of the intergalactic medium. So, um, and uh, this is the work uh, that I been, have been collaborating with these uh, collaborators, as you can see my cursor, uh, which I highlight two young researchers, Charlie Walker, who was my co supervisor student in Manchester and now working in Maximum Institute for Radio Astronomy. Uh, and the other is my postdoc, ex postdoc, Anthony Waters, uh, that he has been working on, on for doing forecasts and plus a few other senior people. Right, so FRB is actually a phenomenon of this very energetic, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot to record. Okay, FRB is this very um, interesting uh, energetic event that happened uh, at a basically uh, a quite distant universe and we detected it with multi-frequency Radio, uh, as, uh, radio telescope, basically. And you can see a typical dispersion showing here in the, uh, uh, in the upper plot. So because of the uh, signal going through the plasma, whether it is around the host galaxy or whether it is around intergalactic medium, the low frequency part will uh, have a delay uh, respect to the higher frequency part. And therefore the time delay would be related to the uh, frequency difference, uh, square frequency difference showing here in the equations are multiplied by the DM, which we call dispersion measurement. So in fact, that DM is, uh, is a total amount of dispersion we will see for a two given frequency channel, which is related to the line of sight integral of the uh, electron density, uh, or we can call plasma electron density along the line of sight. So this integration zero to L would be uh, integrated from observers uh, redshift zero, basically our own telescope on the ground, all the way up to the host galaxy. So therefore, this would, uh, would receive a, uh, a handful of contribution from different components. And because this whole thing was first discovered by Duncan Lorimer, uh, a professor in West Virginia University, so this uh, event also called uh, Lorimer Burst. All right. All right, so what are the uh, contribution to the DM? And the DM, certainly we are here, this is our radio telescope on the ground, uh, such as Meerkat or the future Hyrax, so we certainly cannot escape from our Milky Way. So therefore we receive a contribution from uh, Milky Way uh, plasma. And uh, there's a large contribution from the intergalactic medium. So we call it DM IGM, uh, uh, subscript IGM, which is, which tell us uh, about cosmological information. And the other part is a very important, non-negligible part is the host galaxy contribution to the DM, uh, which is not well known, which depends on host galaxy type inclination, FRB location, and progenitor environment. So it depends on a number of factors. Um, and, but these three things adding up is a total DM. The question is, the question is if we want to use DM, uh, we want to use FRB to probe the intergalactic medium or po probe the host galaxy uh, plasma physics or progenitor scenario, we need to decompose the DM uh, into basically a DM IGM, DM host, and the DM Milky Way. So Milky Way part is quite well known. We have pulsar, uh, data that can, uh, on different angle uh, that within the Milky Way, so we can use that to build a model for the Milky Way uh, plasma model, uh, plasma distribution. But uh, DM, IGM, IGM, and also the high host galaxy would be uh, relatively less well known, right? So we want to decompose this uh, extra galactic component of the DM, right? And in particular, uh, getting information on the, of the DM, IGM is particularly interesting because that will tell us a lot of information on what barons are really is. So this diagram, everyone knows this diagram, this pie chart showing you the percentage of atoms, uh, atoms, dark matter, dark energy, um, and which is shows atom is 4.6%. And where does this 4.6% number get from? We get it from uh, marrying the angular power spectrum of the CMB. So left hand side is, a uh, lower left hand side is the Planck CMB map, and we measure the data, we feed the data with the uh, CM prediction of the CMB temperature angular power spectrum. So we feed that, we vary that parameters, and then feed as a posterior likelihood and get the number from the likelihood. So therefore we can treat that 4.6% as a model parameter or the mean 
baron fraction rather than counting the number, uh, counting the baron itself. And certainly there's no way to count the dark measure and no way to count the dark energy. So we only got this from as a mean value. So not really um, by counting the barons, right? Um, but we, if we really count the barons, we see a, a, a offset. We, that is famous missing baron problem. So the real counting of barons would not recover 4.6%, but rather cover 0.46%. So only 10% only 10% of this 4.6% we know is nature and also we know is location or let's say distribution. But 90% of the 4.6% we know is nature, they are barons, but we don't know where they are. So that's why it's called missing baron problems. A numerical simulation shows that this is an Nostriker early hydro simulation, but later being updated by a few others to show that most of the missing barons are actually in the warm hot intergalactic medium that are pretty, pretty uh, dominant uh, at lower redshift. And uh, X-ray, but this is hard to be measured by X-ray because X-ray would be, uh, X-ray flux would be related to the directly proportional to the NE square. So if you have a, a dropping profile from the cluster center, then the square of it would be even sharper. And therefore X-ray would, would be only able to measure the very central peak of the barons. But FRB is a unique probe because FRB directly uh, equals to the integral of the NE over the Lyell site. So therefore, uh, whatever model that NE is, uh, you can just measure it and there is no square effect to only allow you to locate the, the, the peak of the cluster. Uh, but th this would be uh, basically, all, uh, uh, sorry, the FRB DM would only be, uh, 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 would also be uh, uh, related to the filaments and others uh, uh, DM, okay. So we want to, we want DM IGM. So we need to remove DM host galaxies. And how can we do this? And certainly future hierarchs would have the long baseline uh, radio interferometers that can be able to, uh, that can uh, reconstruct the local image of the host galaxies and possibly isolate them from the total extra galactic IGM, uh, extra galactic DM, okay. But uh, now we don't have that tool. The question is, can we still do this? Okay. Uh, on the other hand, localization is relatively demanding because it needs long baseline interferometry with a variety of configurations and require optical follow-up to determine the host galaxies. And you still need a model to compute the host contribution, uh, different orientations and so on. And recently there's a ASCAP paper published in Nature uh, that's showing how do, you, how do they do this. But now for the majority, uh, majority of the FRB, we don't know what is the host galaxy, but can we still somehow decompose that from the total DM of extra galactic? So this is a paper that I've been doing with uh, Charlie Walker and Renee and uh, 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 of, of doing this and uh, and Tony later on to, to did some forecasts of constraining diffuse gas with FRB. Okay, let's see where we stand. So this is a total, uh, can you see my cursor? Uh, my cursor is gone. Uh, anyway, so you can see the DM observe that is equal to DM Milky Way and plus DM extra galactic, where the extra galactic are IGM plus host. And so I want to know what is the true redshift given the extra galactic, uh, extra galactic DM, right? So I want to know the probability of uh, true redshift, even though I don't know where, where the host galaxy is. I want to calculate this term uh, in, the later, uh, in, the, in, the, in the next equation, uh, given the DM extra galactic. So by Bayes, uh, by Bayesian theorem, that is equal to the probability of the DM actual galactic given the uh, host galaxy redshift, or let's say source redshift, and times the probability of the source redshift divided by a normalization factor, which is the probability of the uh, actual galactic DM. And uh, so P PZS is the probability of the source redshift is the FRB redshift distribution. Left hand side is uh, the probability of DM extra galactic given the source redshift. That is equal to the convolution of the uh, uh, probability of the DM IGM with, uh, with the probability of DM host given the source redshift. Right, so we, what we need to do is to do the LM, LSS modeling for probability of DM of IGM given the source redshift and also do some host galaxy modeling giving the, uh, to, to give me the probability of DM host. Uh, uh, given the uh, source redshift and also modified by FRB uh, redshift uh, distribution. So we need these three factors at least to compute this function and really infer the source redshift even though I don't localize the source, uh, source galaxy. 
All right, so in this study, we show such uh, attempts and basically uh, uh, compute this whole process and getting the final answer. So for each of step I'm presenting now, uh, how can we do it? So for FRB source redshift, we use a uh, e-large distribution, which is basically follow the GRB source redshift distribution. And we assume that this uh, very energetic uh, burst event would actually um, coming from a similar astrophysical source. So we, we assume that they are similar. And also we try that, we try a flat redshift distribution and we find, find eventually that these two doesn't really uh, matter too much. What about the probability of the DM, uh, IGM given ZS? So we use various models here. One is a halo model used in McQueen 2014 about the uh, 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 giving a, a, a distant galaxy, what is the uh, dispersion uh, of the IGM and also its distribution, which tells us the scatter of this value. And also we use Gaussian approximation and also we compute the cosmological simulations. As you can see for redshift uh, equals to unity uh, uh, host galaxies, these are not quite far away, even though the shape vary uh, a bit, but not quite far away from each other. Okay, the now, now the nasty thing comes out. What is the probability of the host galaxy giving a source redshift? We don't know what it, what it is at all, right? The host galaxy could be a elliptical galaxy, could be a spiral galaxy, could be, uh, uh, you know, could be a, 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 a lot of different variety of morphologies of these galaxies, and it could also orient it in different uh, uh, place uh, and give us different orientation. So uh, what can we do? Okay, we just consider them all. So what we did is we model the elliptical galaxies and also we model the spiral galaxies. Uh, so the elliptical galaxy model is actually what is being used in literature. So which is, you can think about our Milky Way like a pretty flat disk where the stellar components are just within the disk uh, and uh, uh, above per, in perpendicular direction to the disk, there will be an exponential fall off. And the spiral galaxies, we um, use this beta model to compute the electron densities. And the other important thing is about the uh, uh, probability distribution of, of, of FRB within the galaxy, where the FRB is. If we don't know anything, then, then we don't know anything. But, uh, but here, basically, we assume that the progenitor should follow the spatial distribution of young stellar populations, such as OB stars or neutron stars. Uh, so we model them as the OB stars or young pulsars or old pulsars or the millisecond pulsars. So those are the different scenarios that we modeled. Um, and, uh, and here I show you a few diagrams showing you what is the probability of the um, of the host uh, for different uh, stellar populations. And on the right hand side, the right upper uh, uh, plot, I show you the uh, different age value, which is the, uh, 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 let's say the displacement of the uh, FRB that per in, in the direction perpendicular to the, uh, uh, to, 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 the, to the disk, spiral galaxy disk. On the lower panel, I show you these two uh, plots showing you the RE and H, which are also the displacement by respect to the center of the elliptical galaxies. As you can see that uh, certainly if the FRB is closer to the center, uh, closer to the bulge of all stars, then the dispersion, it will receive a high value of dispersion value. Whereas if we more uh, further away of it, then the DM will be relatively drop. It will be, probability will be closer to the center. Okay, then we put them all together. Uh, can you see my upper equation? Look like my bar is, is blocking it. Can you see my upper equation? Yeah, I can Hello? see it. Okay, so if I put them all together, I got this plot, which is the le left hand side is probability of ZS given the extra galactic DM value. Um, and what is the inferred source redshift, right? Uh, so, so the solid line is the probability of ZS giving the extra galactic DM and the dashed line is the probability of the ZS giving the DM IGM. So you can see that um, if I have a DM equals 500, it will almost tell me the source redshift is about 0.5. But there is a variation. There is a, let's say a dispersion. And that uh, I can call that, uh, that variance is due to the uh, IGM variance plus the host galaxy variance. Uh, and certainly this, this variance will be, uh, be broadened if the DM will be, become bigger. And actually that variance, uh, when, when the, the, you can see the likelihood become broader, 
the broadening effect is mostly uh, due to the IgM contribution instead of the host garlic contribution. But on the other hand, you can also see when you compare the solid line with dash line, uh, the, so the dash line is slightly uh, moved towards a slightly higher redshift, slightly higher redshift. And that is due to certainly if you neglect the uh, host garlic DM and only and, and regard that 500 solely due to IgM, you will uh, get a slightly higher redshift. Um, and this difference between the solid and dash line, the difference between uh, the probability of ZS given uh, the assumption of DM uh, extragalactic or the assumption of IgM will shrink uh, when you go to higher redshift because uh, certainly for higher redshift uh, FRB, the host galaxy contribution is down-weighted by a factor one plus Z. On the right hand side, this is a known redshift FRB of 12, 11, 0, 2, uh, that is, uh, uh, the whole is repeater FRB that measured by uh, my collaborator, uh, Laura Splitter. You can see that the uh, special scope Z is 0 0.193, which is a uh, dash line, uh, actually the little dash line uh, over here. But from our model, we can predict the um, probability of uh, ZS, which is showing in these two curves. That assuming different FRB source uh, redshift distribution, uh, the flat prior uh, between zero and six and the Elon uh, distribution follow from the GRB doesn't really matter quite a lot, but it give a distribution. It looks like that our model prefer a slightly higher value of that than the spectroscopic one. That is probably due to the scatter of, um, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the host galaxy. Okay. And so therefore in our work, what we did is for those unknown host galaxy, for a given DM, we can compute a table, a table that give you the, uh, uh, the, the, the FRB and the inferred source galaxy redshift giving the model A, B, C, D, E. Those A, B, C, D, E are details. I don't have time, but those are the uh, different uh, galaxy models that we assume for the host galaxy. So if we know optically, for instance, from the HIC camera or other uh, follow-up, maybe uh, picture-wise, LSAT in the future, that we know any of these host galaxies, even, 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 even if we know a bit information, we should be able to pick up one of these models and therefore pinning down the information more precisely. And the second part of this uh, is that once we know that host galaxy ratio, we should be able to use that to, uh, am I passing my time? I passed my time now, so I need to shrink down my talk. Okay, uh, so um, basically we can use that to probe the diffuse gas uh, fraction, which is, basically calculating the FD, uh, as, you, as you can see here, that affecting my actual galactic DM, uh, that is related to the, uh, uh, basically the uh, integral of this. And that FD is the diffuse gas, not, which, is not, uh, which is not the uh, barons already made into stars and galaxies, and not the barons which are in the uh, interstellar medium. So I just quickly go through this. Uh, so we generated uh, 10 to the three number of samples aimed for future HIRAX uh, uh, detection rate in the year of the total FRB in, uh, numbers. And we can basically uh, plot the probability of DM over this. And we uh, constrain the value of the uh, um, diffuse gas fractions. Uh, so here we assume a model of evolution, as you can see, uh, let, let's just uh, see the lower right plot. You can see that we can constrain that evolution of the diffuse gas uh, in a quite precise manner uh, in about uh, for, for a thousand FRB, which is achievable with Hyrax and time in future, in the future uh, one year measurement. For the future probe, uh, probe of uh, IGM, by using FRB, we should think about how we combine that with the uh, Senyaya Zerdovich map, which is measured from Planck so that we can decompose that DM with different morphologies of the lossal structures and therefore infer about the baron content in the uh, filaments and even in the void, which is relatively lower uh, compared to the halos. But those are very interesting uh, target to probe. Summary, most of the FRBs are not localized and we are, so we do need a good model for de deconstructing DM, IGM and DM holes from the total actual galactic components. We build such a model by incorporating Gaussian density function of larger structure, elliptical galaxy and spiral galaxy electron density and stellar population uh, of different galaxies to calculate PDM holes. And this is the most nasty part, we, but we have done so. So if, if we have any 
uh, assistant uh, ancillary information of the host galaxy, we can use, we can plug those information into this model, uh, connect that information, and therefore we should be able to give a, a more precise uh, uh, computation of this, this term. Then we can use Bayesian theorem to infer the uh, source galaxy redshift, giving the extra galactic uh, DM component. Uh, and the results show that it's largely dependent on the host galaxy model, but inferred redshift are, are obtainable and relatively inconsistent across these different models. We further forecast that a thousand localized FRB um, uh, um, with a diffuse gas fraction can be quite accurately determined, including its redshift evolution. So our future will be towards relating the DM measurement of the IGM electron density with SA effect to infer the binary distribution. Thank you. Thank you, Enjen. Um, so, um, does Let's anyone go. have questions? Okay, Matt has a question. Great question. On, on, you showed some cosmological constraints or projections. I think it was quite quick, so I've kind of missed what's is what are the is that combining with other data or yeah so these these i think these combine with Planck data to fix the okay. uh, uh omega matter and yeah. uh, other parameters um, geometric factors yeah omega matter and h yeah okay all right 